What's going on guys? This is your motivation guy, Keith Allen, and welcome to the Pro Guys Rocket League channel. Today, we're gonna be giving you some tips on how to break out of every Rocket League rank. You know, Rocket League is an adrenaline pumping, physics-based game when, you know, with a virtually limitless skill ceiling. And so when jumping in for the first time, it can be difficult to know how to get started and what's important to work on. And so this guy should act as a tool to help you guys climb up the Rocket League rank ladder. Are you guys ready for this? I know I am. Let's get this going. Okay guys, so first up we have the bronze ranks. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do if we haven't already is to fix the game settings. Since the default controls don't allow us 100% freedom of movement, we're gonna have to change them now so we can build proper muscle memory from the beginning. Okay, so in the camera tab, look for camera shake at the top and uncheck it. You also are gonna wanna change your distance to 270, height to 100, angle to negative 4.0, and stiffness to 0.45. You can adjust these values to your liking, but you know it's recommended that you stay close to these values and not switch them up too often. Swivel speed will adjust how quickly you can move your camera with the right stick, and transition speed will change how quickly ball cam switches to car cam and vice versa. So try to keep them low enough that you can still see what's happening as the camera pans. Next, we're gonna set up proper controls and bindings. So at the top of the controls tab, you're gonna want your steering and aerial sensitivity around the same value. Most pros use around 1.4, which strikes the balance between speed and control. Controller dead zone should be around 0.10, and dodge dead zone should be between 0.6 and 0.8. In binding, set your L1 or LB key to power slide and free air roll so you can seamlessly recover from flips and aerials. Next, put your boost on R1 or RB so you can have a finger dedicated to it. And finally, set air roll left to square or X, and air roll right to circle or B. These will come in handy more as we rank up. Okay guys, so now that all of our controls are set, it's time to start training. Start up Psionic Striker training on Pro and practice putting shots on targets at a high speed. All right, so next up, head into Psionic's goalie training on Pro and practice clearing the ball, you know, intentionally aiming to one side or the other. This will help you to replays whether you're moving into them or they are moving into you. So continue to play ranked until you get silver. Okay guys, so after bronze, we have the silver ranks. Okay, so since players in this rank are fairly inconsistent at hitting the ball where they want, you know, it's really best to play it patiently and just watch to see where the play could be headed to next. And so if you look at where the opponent is ramping up relative to the ball, you should be able to tell the general direction the play is headed and then position around it accordingly. And so driving around the opponent's touches forces them to either hit straight to you or try to maintain possession. And so since almost nobody in silver knows how to gain or maintain possession, this strategy of getting around plays ahead of time will often lead to free shooting opportunities on the opponent's side. And so this is most often used when the opponent is clearing it to one of their corners for safety. And so learning to navigate through the small boost pads as you reposition to get around plays is one of the most underrated skills in this game and should be picked up right away. Conserving and using your boost only when you need it will give you a huge edge over the competition. And so other than in-game, the best way to practice your boost pathing is by going into free play, opening up the settings menu, and unchecking unlimited boost at the top of the gameplay tab. Spend about five to 10 minutes in your sessions, hitting the ball around, and memorizing where all the straight lines of boost are in the center of the field. Soon enough, you're gonna be finding yourself with more boost than ever before. All right, guys, so now to talk about the gold ranks. All right, so one of, if not the singular most important things in a Rocket League match is ball possession. So if you have control of the ball, you can control the pace of play. And so one of the most neglected skills, and even so far up as grand champion, is catching the ball and creating space. One of the simplest ways to score in these ranks is by catching the ball after matching its momentum, pushing it to open space or your corner, and then hitting around whoever rushes headfirst to challenge. The undisputed best way to improve your ball control, guys, is by playing a lot of 1v1s. And so this might not sound like much fun for most, but it's precisely because, you know, we have no one else to blame but ourselves, and we're definitely gonna learn from our mistakes a lot quicker. So when we can hit the ball around a single opponent in a 2v2 or 3v3, your team will instantly be rewarded with open space, and thus a chance to outplay the opposing team. So learning to control the ball and just play it around opponents will lead to more beats, more advantages on the field, more opportunities for your team to score, and a higher rank in the long run. Okay guys, so next stop is Platinum. At this rank, players tend to put either too much or too little pressure on the ball, as all the slight nuances to rotation still haven't been fully learned yet. And so the best way to get to Diamond from Platinum is by practicing being the teammate that is needed in your games. In other words, you're gonna have to start adapting to your teammates to make up for their weaknesses by filling in the gaps in rotation they leave open. 
And so if your teammate or teammates are constantly ball chasing, then you should look to work around that by playing back and looking to finish opportunities when you have a teammate to cover. Likewise, if you're playing with someone who isn't applying a lot of pressure to the ball, then you should look to be the one that stops the opponent from gaining any meaningful possessions, whether that be by fake challenging or boost stealing or something else, Learning to adapt to your teammates and opponents on the fly without outplaying yourself is a skill that you're going to continue to improve in as you put time into practicing it. The diamond ranks are notoriously difficult to really get through, in large part because of their fast pace and high level of unpredictability. And so diamond players almost always get powerful touches on the ball when they want, but are inconsistent in their decision making and often double commit on plays without considering their recovery. And so one of the easiest ways to score in this rank is by baiting the opponent into a bad 50-50 they can't recover quickly from, namely in your defensive corner. So this works best when you secure the 100 boost as you have guaranteed momentum to push upfield. So if you notice while setting up an offensive play that the opponents are in a zone together, try immediately looking to exploit the open midfield as these are the perfect times to really set up a powerful team play. And so when the opponents are in the same area, that means their clear is only going in one direction. If you don't receive a pass in the situation as the second man, look to predict the save into the opposite corner and boost still if you can't land a shot on target. Okay guys, so if you've made it to champion, you're in the third highest rank set. Okay, so moving up to grand champion from this point, it's all about being consistent and making as few mistakes as possible. Okay, so at this stage of our development, it becomes essential to stick to a training routine that will improve on the worst parts of your gameplay. So a mistake that, you know, players often make is that, you know, they just want to improve what they're already good at instead of just working on something that they really need to work on. It's always more fun to do what we're already good at. So be careful of falling into this trap as it can really just slow down your rate of improvement drastically. You know, watching professional gameplay and taking notes of how different situations play out will definitely help you just mentally reset and really understand the bigger picture of how Rocket League is played at the top 1%. All right, guys, so now you finally reached the coveted rank of Grand Champion. For many, this marks the end of a long, long journey. And so for others, it's only just the beginning. And so if you're shooting for, you know, Supersonic Legend, then you're going to have to be ready to put time into playing and reviewing your own replays. So look back at the games that you lose and really just take note of what you could have done to prevent getting scored on. Know how to counter the different play styles as your opponents at this rank will often change how they're playing to stay one step ahead. Experience is the most valuable tool to have in your arsenal at this level, as rarely you're gonna have much time to really think through your plays. So just watching professional Rocket League and just taking note of what they do differently than you can help in closing that final skill gap. All right, guys, well, that was it for our Pro Guys Rocket League video today. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys liked the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna connect with me on my Instagram, I would love to connect with you at Your Motivation Guy. Listen, keep grinding, never stop, never give up. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.